Majestic Major, a model aircraft project part 5, fitting the servo bay inside the fuselage and using JB Weld to make the shape of the front area exactly match the engine mount. In this clip I'm rubbing down the JB Weld that I previously applied inside the front of the nose. I'm only rubbing it down really to keep for the paint, its appearance is relatively unimportant as it is completely invisible when the engine mount is fitted. So why am I painting it? Well, I don't know, I really have to paint it, I can't live with the grey colour. Mainly though it's yet another step to stop any fuel or oil soaking into the balsa wood from which the nose is made. Many internal combustion powered model aircraft will die a death by becoming fuel soaked over time. The next part of the job is to mount the servo bay inside the fuselage and I've made a cardboard template to exactly the right length. I've used a piece of card because I can't get my steel rule in there. Now all I have to do is measure the piece of card, which is four and three quarter inches long. This is where the servo bay is going to fit. I'm going to use four pieces of mahogany to support the servo tray, but initially, today, I'm only going to fit two of them. This clip shows the first piece of mahogany in place, and it's not just stuck to the side of the fuselage. Here you get the idea of what I'm about to do. I'm fitting a servo tray between two bearers, and so far I've only got one in place. Here are the two mahogany bearers, and they're perfectly notched to fit in the correct position in the fuselage. This is some mahogany that a viewer brought me. It was cut from some very old window frames, and because these pieces of mahogany really have dried out over the years, it's incredibly light and very strong. Just the thing for engine bearers and servo tray bearers in a model aircraft. Now I need to find the center of these two bearers. That's very simple, I just divide four and three quarters of an inch by two. And in case you don't understand fractions, that means that the center is at two and three eighths of an inch. Now I have a center mark, that's where I'll put the center of the servo tray. I need to do it this way in order to pre-drill the holes in the mahogany. If I don't do that it will be very difficult to get the screws in and I may split it. It's a simple job to line up the servo tray with the mark in the centre, then use my deep hole marker through the holes to make two black spots. Then I intend to drill four pilot holes using a one and a half millimetre diameter twist drill. I mark the second mahogany bearer in exactly the same way as the first one. I drilled the pilot holes using my Proxon motor tool with a 1.5mm drill bit fitted. This is very freehand and it's not 100% accurate but it's near enough for rock and roll. Once all four of the holes were piloted, I then screwed the servo tray to the pieces of mahogany. This particular servo tray I've had for many years and it's one that I use for jobs like this, it's a template. Then when I fit the proper servo tray, usually a new one, it's all nice and clean and not full of sawdust. In this clip I'm screwing the other end of the servo tray to the other bearer. The servo tray is cut for a switch, but for this installation I'm not going to use this type of switch. And also, the throttle servo is too low down in the fuselage. I would have to use a long Bowden cable. I think I have a better idea. Maybe it will be a good idea to mount the throttle servo higher up in the fuselage. And closer to the throttle linkage on the engine. That way I can just use a solid push rod instead of a Bowden cable. I'll have to see how the tank fits and if there's enough room in that area. The part of the servo tray that is designed to mount the switch and take the third servo is probably a good place to mount the radio receiver. Once again I'll see how that works out in a later episode. To mount the two mahogany bearers to the slots that are cut in the side of the fuselage I used some PVA adhesive, or white glue. But then over the top of the joint I used some medium viscosity super glue too. I used some bits of scrap mahogany to make sure that the bearers were in the correct place and didn't move out of alignment. By using super glue and PVA this should be a very strong joint when everything's cured. Time to do some work on the engine mount. I bought some sellotape, but unfortunately I bought the wrong stuff. 
This is the type of tape that you can tear with your hands, which makes it very easy to wrap presents. But really for this job I should have used the stronger stuff, never mind. For this job I need to fix the engine mount in place into the fuselage, just using a couple of 2BA machine screws. Just in case I haven't mentioned it previously because a viewer did comment telling me how to do it, I will be using very thin cyanoacrylate adhesive or super glue on the threads in the wood, then I will re-tap them to put the fixing bolts in place. With the engine mounting now temporarily in place, it's time to mix up some JB Weld. As I mentioned in the previous episode, it's a two pack epoxy mix, it's very strong and you just have to mix two equal amounts until it turns to this colour. Now all I need to do, using a very old debit card, is fill the gap between the engine mount and the wood of the fuselage. The plan is, once the JB Weld has set, it should be a simple job to remove the engine mount, because the JB Weld is stuck to the sellotape and not the aluminium. Then the whole assembly will look much better. I'm not going to labour every part of this job, it's fairly self-explanatory. The next time you see this, the job will be completed and the engine mount should fit perfectly in the recess in the fuselage. For now, here is a gratuitous shot of the JB Weld curing. Stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists, and by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.